Guard your privacy and abide by the community guidelines. How about it? Come on. We got Skipper T in the house. You're up yet? No. Oh, here, here, it comes. Roll. here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. <laughs> Woohoo! Hey, there it is. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Happy Oyster Show. What's going on? I'm your host, Bark Burke. We got hey, good morning, Skipper T in the house. How are you on a beautiful Saturday in March? It is a beautiful day. Finally, the weather's getting a little better. What do we got there? We Get got better. 56.8 degrees outside. We'll take it. So you know what happens when the temperature starts to get good? It's time to paint your top and paint your bottom and bring it on home. I want to welcome today's sponsors. Okay, today's sponsors. I can't remember who all my... I've got so many sponsors, I don't know where the hell I'm going. Defender Marine. Get on, check it out. Defender Marine helped us out a little bit. Got a little bottom paint from them. They're awesome. I'm going to show you what's going on with them a little bit later on. Tractor Supply, believe it or not. I know. Tractors and farming, that all goes together. Apple culture, farm, it's all good. Tractor Supply, another proud sponsor today. Uh, Tractor Supply just opened up a brand new store just down here in Comac. And uh, apparently they're going to be putting one in Riverhead. And uh, they're supplying us with our top paint for our boat. And I'll get into that in a half a second. It's a little bit new. It's a little, I don't know. I've never did it. I'll get into it in a little bit. East Coast Shell Fishing Association is also a great sponsor, a great asset, and a great resource for all of your aquaculture needs. Aquaculture is in its infancy here in, I think, in its infancy here in Long Island. Oh, and it is. It is. It's evident by that NACE conference in Boston. Yeah. Uh, and also evidence of our, what's part of our show today. We got maps today, boys and girls. We got maps. Uh, so the East Coast Show, they just put out a brand new newsletter. I strong, there's so much great information in there. I cannot emphasize it enough. If you're an oyster farmer, if you got anything to do with oysters, become a member of East Coast Shell Fishing Growers Association. If you're on the East Coast. You know, I'll be honest with you, Tom. There's some information in that letter. It's universal. This can go all around. So really, you don't even have to be in the East Coast. Because, you know, we got a lot of people in the UK. we got a lot of people in the AU and uh, Australia that's following us. Uh, so, you're away. Why not? You know, if you've got an association, maybe we'll go and become... Well, we, uh, come on over. Anyway, let's get it. Bring it on home. Tony Joe, what's a good word with you? Uh, as, I, I am feeling better, thanks, Cal. I was down with the flu, miserable, hadn't been that sick, but feeling good. And I never take my health for, like, for granted. And I'm feeling great back in the saddle. Um, that's gonna have that, that song. That, excited yeah. to be feeling great. Uh, spring's sp we're technically in spring. What this down? Yeah. I we're think that's going to be better. Technically in spring, although here on Long Island as... Put your butt over a little bit and as, cover that up. Um, there we go. I know from being down here for many, many years, the warm weather is going to be a little while. And of course, by the water, we feel it. Manhattan today, New York City might be in the 70s today. And we're going to be maybe 20 degrees less. Is that which is crazy. Saying? And it's right, funny. That, it's only 60 miles that way. I mean. A sidebar, years ago when I first met Bart, I was in the city, living in the city, and it was hot, sweltering... And when I'd come out here to meet up with Bart um, after work, I'd have to borrow sweatshirts all the time, like that degree, that change of temperature. But anyway, all is good. Um, we're happy to be here in... Jack up a little bit. I, I can't, rem I can't remember my note. I didn't put any notes because she came down on time today. We were able to type it all in. Check out the comments below. Please give a comment down the road uh, after we syndicate, after we go live. You know the drill, guys. I need help here. We're trying to get as much. We're trying to get as many subscribers as we can. If you could please share it with all your friends, that would be great as well. Uh, I really appreciate it. Come on over to our Instagram as well. Uh, Instagram. What do you want to see? With the, uh, What's it? What do you want to see? I want to see the, the, the part that we wrote down there that we were typing oh, on. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. There we go. All right. So first thing, permit update. Okay. Our permit update. We are coming up on 13 months into our permit application process. Uh, it seems to be coming to a head. We are now <laughs> waiting on the D. OS, which is the Department of State. We are no longer relying on the Department of Environmental Conservation, the DEC. We got, we're good there. 
but we need these other guys before we get those guys to go and these guys, and then these guys got to get with those guys, and we're almost all of the guys together right now. We're almost forming a team, and we're part of it, and I'm really, 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 really excited about our first rookie year of growing oysters, bringing on home. Which brings me to the next thing of the Suffolk County Lease Program. We are not members of the Suffolk County Lease Program. We are a, on, on a different side of it, and I'm going to get into that in a half a second so that everybody can start to really understand what's going on with this permitting process. We went to this meeting, which was a bunch of farmers and a bunch of other people, and they're trying to, this is the, the, the final, they're at their nine years, they're not going to do a lease this year. I'm not going to get into great big lot of details and whatnot. I'm just going to go over the basics. But anyway, they've been doing it for nine years, and here we are in the review time. And there's been a little oppos opposition from some other people that I think are not really quite educated on what's going on. And really, there's not. It's it, it's. Let me. Let's go to the maps. T. It's time to go over here. I I, I set up my door. I set up my table over here, but I'm ready to go. So you can come on over, T. Careful with the, with the net. You might want to switch the, switch the camera around a little bit. That would be bit. awesome. Yeah, let's do it this way. No, 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 no. If you turn it the other way, that camera works better. And then hit the... Hit the... Hit the... the re camera. Throw reverse it so I don't want a yeah, selfie. No, no, yeah, it's going. Talking. Is that it now? Are oh, right? freaking beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> Here we go. Come on in here, T. Here we are. This is the eastern end of Long Island. This is the Great Peconic Bay. This is Long Island Sound. Connecticut would be way up here. Out here is Orient Point. And if we went down this one and kept on going out over that way, it would be Montauk, okay? So here's the Peconic Bay. These are state waters. This is state regulated. This is county leased. Is that clear? Suffolk County. Suffolk County, New York lease program is this area. Hey Andrew, welcome from the UK. Hey, bring it on home. <clears throat> I, I got some interesting, no, I'll get into that in a minute. Okay, so here we have the current amount of aquaculture sites that are active by all of these little itty bitty squares. Over here at Hogman, there's a lot of guys over here. These are I know some of these guys. I know some of these guys. I know some of these guys. I know some of these guys over here. You know, we're all together, okay? But each one of these sites, and this is to scale, is 10 acres each one of these squares. That's it, okay? So it's not the whole bay, back up. It's not the whole bay that is loaded with buoys. It is not the whole bay that is being what taken is over. Farmed or yeah, it's a minuscule amount of surface area, surface bottom is being used for aquaculture here. A lot of these little plots here, they're not even active, so there's nothing going on with those. So the 10-year review program, they're trying to do the right thing and trying to get everybody together, and I think it's awesome that they had this meeting. They really, I think they're going in the right direction. They're getting some communication amongst everybody to be able to make it a win-win for everybody. Define everybody, which are the growers, the boaters, the yacht people, the, um, the private club people, anyone who wants access, anyone who wants to enjoy the bay, all participants are coming together to try to work things out so it's all mutually agreeable and usable. Absolutely. And, uh, and, and I think it can be done, provided we keep the communication open. It's just like any other relationship that you're dealing with. Communication is the key. All right. Again, here's the same overlay map. This is a little bit different map. It's got a lot of different areas. There's some areas that are called are scallop grounds that they might want to... Again, baymen and aquaculture, two different guys, although they both work on the bay, they should both be working together, but sometimes they might get a little pissed off because you've got cages on the bottom, and they come along with a scallop dredge, and again, we all have to respect one another, okay? Please, here's our spot right here. And just tell them as far as, the well, the canal, they... 
Got what? a mule. Her name is Sal. What? Shinnecock Canal. Shinnecock Canal is right here. Here's where we are. This is a huge. This is not. The, this is not the scale. We have just a one little dot within this gray orange area here. This was a private oyster grant way, way back when. Uh, in the 1800s or it yeah, goes way 1800s, back then. 18, way back. 1800s. Uh, there's a there's a great some some great history out there, and uh, you can see how the blue, which is scallop area, is over underneath ours, and so there could be a little bit of a conflict. Back up again, a little bit of a conflict between us and some of our scallop friends. Uh, obviously, you got to be out there. You're gonna have to be respectful to these guys. Help them. Maybe you know. I don't know. Work it out with them. Okay. Hey, listen. I got cages over here. You can go here this year. You know what I mean? Uh, just everybody work together, please. That's what I want to do. I think. How'd I do? Did I cover that? Good. Yeah. Yeah. Am no. I exactly. Am I? I don't want to belabor it. I don't want to get into a great big long BS session about what's right and what's wrong. Uh, I just want an update of what's going on with the industry. Did I cover it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Locally. Yeah. Back it up, Jack. That's good. All right, next on the agenda was what? Uh, your mom, the figure. Yeah, the leaves, bottom paint, top paint. Top paint, here we go. Defender products. I've been using Defender for a while now. I buy all my fiberglass. I buy, uh, I buy a lot of stuff from Defender, and they seem to be doing the right job. They, you order it on a, on a <laughs> 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and oh, damn it, the UPS guy is right here at the door uh, the next day. Uh, if they have it in stock, it's coming really quick. It's coming out of Connecticut. I, uh, I like them. That They do the right thing. Uh, is my head like half cut off there, Skipper T, or what are we doing there? Uh, yeah, let me get a little bit. Yeah, I'm more worried about the camera than I am about the comments. All right. I don't want to get these crappy. Let me put those in. Put them right here on this little rack. Oh, yeah. So, bottom paint. What is bottom paint? You want to come in a little bit? Let me get this. I see you right away. That's for our flopsy. Isn't she looking good? I built some brackets for it. Did I show you guys that last week? Yeah, you're showing the props last week. I was, oh, oh, I showed, the uh, oh my, my new designs? Yeah. I haven't, I haven't done any more of my designs other than just twisted it up a little bit. Uh, it's coming all good. But that's the whole other thing. Uh, the flopsy's coming on great. I'm really excited about that. Bottom paint, I gooped it all up. This is it here. There's still some left in here because we have the spots where the cylinder blocks are and whatnot. And, and uh, when the trailer comes in and it, you take those out, you're going to give it a quick lop and hopefully blah, 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 blah. It's really thick and zesty, okay? You need one of these. I'm, I, I kid you not. It was this much gunk. From here down was gunk, like crap, like sand, like copper. like It's this biofouling. Uh, paint so that it prevents the bottom from getting all the soak in the grime and the crack and the barnacles and the sludge. You wouldn't believe how much weight that adds to the boat, number one. Number two, it slows it down so you're not as efficient so you're burning more gas to push all this stuff that's hanging off the bottom. So you use a special paint to keep it from fouling. We are, just emailed a guy, again, East Coast Shell Fishing, uh, a paint product that is non-toxic, that is supposed to eliminate biofouling for six to eight months. And they're going to go on the cages and the lines. It might eliminate a lot of labor. Stay tuned on that one. we got five gallons coming. But anyway, back to the bottom paint. We use, this is the brand I use. Isn't it nice? No, honestly. <laughs> Here's the logo. You have to use a special thinner. For the special paint. I dropped it up, blah, blah, blah. We can go out and take a look at it. Top paint. Let's go out and take a little quick look. I'll show you how well it turned out. How nice it turned out. Wait a minute, I need my coffee. We've got 56 cages ready to rock and roll, boys and girls. All I need is a permit in my hand. Seed is on its way. There's Schlitz. There's Schlitz. Oh, there goes Schlitz. So, we rolled it all on on the bottom. I didn't go really careful with the delicateness. And now we're going to put the top paint on here. It's going to go to here. And then we'll give it another little quickie line around there with what we got left over. And this is kind of what I was talking about. With the leftover paint that we got, we come out, slop that on there real good, get it going with that. That ought to be... Yeah. 
when the trailer comes in. I was hoping it was going to be in the water this week. Didn't quite make it. I'm not sure about next week. I hope. Fingers crossed. I don't necessarily want to put the boat in the water without having a permit in my hand. Mm. Does that make sense? Um, you never know. I don't know. I don't know about the permit. Let's go back inside. Welcome, Helsinki, Finland. Nice of you to tune in. Alan is in the house. Nice. So now that brings us to the top pin. Obviously, in a marine environment, it is all about durability. I cannot emphasize it enough. And usually when they start, if it says marine on it, it just automatically sends the price 10 times higher. How many coats do you have to do? One. That's Only one, one coat? Right now they're gone. What's recommended coat? How many? Uh, again, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to use your, your your judgment a little bit here. I know she's gonna come out of the water next year. Um, so I know I'm gonna be putting another coat on it next year. There was some coats that were on it. It wasn't in too bad a condition, so you have to judge all of those types. Does of the things. manufacturer recommend how many coats? I think, I, I think the manufacturer recommends possibly two. Okay. Um, but I I'm going with the one I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied with the coverage that it was and what was going on. Um, now, top paint. The top paint made by this company here is also extremely expensive. Uh, this stuff here was 180 bucks or something and it was on sale because it was a dented kit. I don't know. I bought it a while ago. It never goes bad. Um, I got, I don't know, 100 and something. It was over 100 bucks. So Freddie says to me, he says, that's Top paint, we don't, you need the bottom paint, you know, Freddy the Angry Baby. And, and where's the captain today? The captain, Freddy the Angry Baby, is uh, off to Virginia to go look at a new boat. Shh, don't tell anybody, we're looking at a new boat already. We don't even have the other boat in the water yet. But whatever, it's all good. He's going down to Virginia to go check out and see a couple of things that I sent him down to. Uh, so, uh, more on that later. He, Fred says, and Fred's been an angry baby for a long, long time. Uh, he says, tractor supply makes some of the toughest paint around. And he's a tractor guy and go to the block. Uh, I'm, so we went to tractor supply. $35, boys and girls, okay? And then I bought another quart of this uh, for $11 because this is blue and this is white. And I'm going to make my own little tintage uh, accordingly, okay? Uh, so, Freddie said before he left, don't make it too dark. He wants it nice and light blue. The reason we don't want to go totally white is because the white and the glare really kills you after a while. If you're on deck and you're all white and the sun is beating down on you, it's going to make you tired, believe it or not. So you want to have that other color than white. When it's just reflecting off and hitting you, it's not good for the body. That makes sense. That's people. smart. So we want to go with a little bit lighter color. It's an old school trick. Uh, guys with white boats, just tint it down a little bit. It's gonna help you. You're gonna see it. You're gonna feel better. Especially <laughs> a commercial yeah. boat versus What's a rec that? especially on a commercial boat. Yeah, well you're on that thing. Maximize your labor, maximize your people, yeah. You know, you're on that thing every day, you want to make it as comfortable and easy as it, as it can be. And a lot of people don't realize that just making the boat white uh, off white uh, is gonna help you. So that's where we're going with this on the top. Now I know oh you're gonna blow in your boat. No, no, not really, guys. I mean we got in, with everything on our boat, the tumbler to this to that, I'm not afraid. I'm full transparency, guys. I got no problems with that. We got five grand in that thing. Not even. That's it. That's everything. Five. No, I'm not including labor. All right, but that's it. Um, we're really excited. You know, you can spend. A including lot of money. the price of the boat. What's that? Including no, the price of the boat. Everything. The boat yeah. that we purchased, used, <coughs> the motor, the tumbler, the steel to make the tumbler, the pipe. That's pipe for our tumbler on board, that was 450 bucks, that was a big pipe. Again, I'm doing this on a budget, the reason I'm doing it on a budget is to show you guys that it can be done. Could we go out and spend, not really, but could I go out and loan a bunch of money? And, yeah, and a lot of oyster farmers do. Don't. Don't throw all this money in there. I got a lot of dough in these cages. Now, I'm not talking about the cages here, okay? The cage, the labor in the cages, that's a whole other ball here. Hence this, whatever. So, we went with a, anywhere we could save a couple of bucks, and if we can maybe pick up another sponsor, I'm in. Maybe track the supply. There they are. We'll give you the scoop. Stay tuned. Obviously, we're not going anywhere. Tractor's getting off the land and going in the water. Uh, what's that? 
The tractors oh, are going yeah. from agriculture to aquaculture. So, tractor supply, welcome aboard, and happy oyster. Uh, thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate it. All right, moving on. What's next? You have your list right there. No, I don't. Um, tractor supply. We did top paint. We did a bottle paint. Top paint. Top oh, East Coast shellfish. I can't remember. Oh, East Coast shellfish is those. Cornell issues? spat up. Cornell spat update. Cornell spat update. Uh, Drain, clean, fill, repeat. <laughs> which is really what we're doing up there at Cornell. Uh, the oysters are getting bigger and bigger. You saw the spat that we had set in our channel, on our channel page. We spat, you know, spewed those out. Well, now they're getting a little bit bigger and bigger and bigger. They're up to about two millimeter-ish coming up, ready to go into our new... What size is that? Uh, two millimeters. What do you mean, what size is that? Pin of the head. Head of the pin. You know, um, itty-bitty. And uh, the bigger they get, the easier it is to take care of them because they're easier to see and you don't have to deal with them. So basically what I do up there two days a week, three days a week, is you go in, you pull them up, you rinse them off, you drain the tank, you clean the tank, you refill the tank, you stick them back in, and then you slam down some more algae for them. Uh, I'm, I'm simplifying a little bit, but that's about it. And that's the bottom line. Maybe we'll do a little quickie vlog this week because uh, I will be up there on Monday for sure. And, uh, and show you guys exactly what's going on with that. East Coast Shellfish Association, again, they have a newsletter out. Uh, I am so I'm glad I found them. I think they're awesome. Uh, I learned so much from them, and I really appreciate it. The, one of the new things that we got an email in is about this new tag thing. Can we pull that up? Temp tag? What's that? Temp tag. The temp tag, yeah. Um, I got an email to these guys. Um, it's so important that we all stay safe with this oyster thing and keeping them cold. Keeping them cold in the temperature chain is extremely important. Some of my ideas are not necessarily, I want to take our oysters and send them out, 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 and really out. Like opening up new markets that could possibly be in Europe or whatever, whatever the case may be. Believe it or not, what's the stat? How much shellfish, Tony John? Oh, the, my, my fun fact? Yeah, your fun fact. Oh Isn't my it? gosh, I heard this a month ago, a little, well, well, over a month ago. Yeah. But the fun fact that I learned, and let me tell you guys, guys and gals, and who's ever watching, is if you go to a cocktail party, go somewhere, 90, 90, 90% of the seafood we consume in the United States is imported. When I heard that, I elbowed That's Bartlett, crazy. you gotta be kidding me. Why? 90%. And with that crazy number, in fact, that number I got from Captain Pete Haskell, Haskell's uh, Seafood, I don't know if you've talked about Pete at all, but we're actually gonna be, we're gonna be filming at Pete's coming up here. But Pete was saying, he's actually out there fishing and pick, picking up whatever is running at the respective time, and he's got his customers he has to fulfill the orders for. There are days he's fishing, he brings something in that he may not necessarily need for his clients, but he keeps it. If he's, you know, if he's able, again, he's very, he's very, he's all legit. Bycatch. And um, he will take that, and he has his own processing facility, and he will take the, this fish and use it for chowder, whatever, he's, whatever he is doing. Utilizing what you get. Not necessarily going out there to find one specific getting species. Specifically getting XYZ fish, using he what comes nature home with provides. Whatever. It's almost like the, the, that chef with a basket. What's in your basket? And He's then that comes in and bing, that's what he works with. Uh, again, keeping it fresh, keeping it local, keeping it tasty. And what, Pete was, what Captain Pete was saying also is he knows with the fish he is getting, he has two hands. His two hands that a cat should get, possibly his processor, is two hands, so he knows from sea to consumer, four hands have touched it. When we get fish at a restaurant, we're going out to dinner, whatever the case may be, or at, from a market, it could be as many as 20 hands from, from the water to your, to your mouth, handling that. So t as Bart started to talk about how this all evolved, right now this conversation are the temp tags. Temperature is critical from out of the water to your mouth. And when I don't care how far, personally myself, I don't care how far it's going just as long as they keep it cold. All right, and it's gotta be within a time frame. But nowadays you can pretty much get to the farthest part of the world within a day or two. 
And something I'd like to throw out to all the watchers out there as we get into, as we are in our rookie year and getting going, and for all of us consumers out there, when you go to a fish market, what was that? I, 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 I go ahead. When you go to a fish market, when you go to go to a restaurant and they have certain whatever whatever fish they're putting on the menu or oysters, ask your server where's it from. If they don't know ask your chef keep asking for the reason being you may be getting fish that's coming from again 90 percent imported from who knows where how many hands have touched it how fresh is it when you're getting fish locally it may cost more but you're keeping the local economy going and you know it's not it's not going through a lot of hands ask where you get your fish ask where you're getting your oysters where have they grown where are they harvested i agree did you know, and I just learned this recently, that local can be considered up to 350 miles away? And is that for fish? Uh, shellfish. Shellfish? Fish. 350? 350 can be considered local. Interesting. Okay. Uh, That's interesting. Don't quote me on that. It might be 200, but it's, it's a lot of miles. That's interesting. And you can consider yourself local. Yeah, it, you know how interesting it really is, T? Yeah. I'm going to tell you how interesting I, it is. I, I know where you're going. <laughs> I, I know okay. where you're going. I know where you're going. If you take our location and you put a 350-mile circle out all the way around, I'm hitting Boston, I'm hitting New York City, I'm hitting almost Washington, D.C., definitely Philadelphia. Okay. Uh, do you see the where my mind and all of this is going? Do you guys get it? Uh, I, I'm so happy. I'm so excited. I am looking forward to it, T. Uh, all we got to do is get a little product in the water. That's what we got to do. That is really, really our biggest focus right now. We got a lot of fire fish hooks out in the ocean, and we are starting to reel them in, and we are excited. Uh, I got not much else to go on. Well, we, you? I think we need to give we need to give a shout out to one of our oh mates, our future our, our future, future mates. And for you guys, you'll you'll meet this future mate when the time is right. But come on, give give her a, a shout a, out. A special shout out, and we, we came up with her. She she likes she, to she likes to be on the evil side. She's kind of like I don't know. She likes to be the villain, the dark side, the villain, the villain. Dark and side. she said, "I would like my nickname to be Octopussy." I says, "No problem." <laughs> special shout out to our girlfriend <laughs> Octopussy. She will be on the boat. Yep. Uh, she's a James Bond fan as you'll well. Meet, you'll meet and, her uh, in, in time, people. It's, uh, it's, uh, I, I, that's just a little teaser for you guys. Because exactly. when we start streaming live out on the boat, this is going to start to get exciting. will be out there. Uh, oh, by the way, I figured out how to stream live out on the boat. It's probably going to be through the, at least to start with, through the iPhone. Uh, we put set up, being that we can find a good uh, cell phone Tower, tower signal. signal, a nice, a pretty good, powerful we'll one. We can have, no, we can have a personal. We can set up a personal hotspot, so consequently, you don't. Uh, <laughs> we're not gonna have problems okay. streaming. So uh, that that personal hotspot, bang, you just, I'm just. Uh, not, the next thing I gotta worry about is how am I gonna power the camera for six or eight hours at a pop? Which you know what, I can figure that out. I. Got an awesome set of tools. So, again, I really appreciate all you guys tuning in each and every week. It wouldn't be half as much fun if it wasn't for you guys. Can uh, we do Can we do a quick shout-out? We haven't done that yet. Yeah, sure. Shout them out, T. Shout them out. You guys, let me know where you are. I did hit a couple of you. And we're gonna yeah, give you go a ahead. Get over there on that thing. Oh, huh? we can see it right here. Oh, I can't read them that quick. All right. <laughs> I don't. I'm kind of slow, you know? Not because of just I am. Sweden, of course, sound. Sweden, we're glad you're here, baby. Thank you, Sweden. Love you, baby. St. Paul, Artie Mike from St. Paul, Minnesota. Minnesota. Bring it on home. Bring it on home, guys. So when we started this whole YouTube thing way back in my other life for the Bike Man for You. Thanks for thumbs uh, up, with, sound. You know, and by the way, any guys that are still watching the Bike Man for You, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Uh, that was my other life. And, you know, the haters and whatnot. And this week, uh, speaking it out, you're still going here, right? Where are we at? Witch and Tucky, Zip. <laughs> you're too funny, baby. Where's that? Uh, Witch and Tucky? Yeah. It's where Zip 2001 is. Uh, it's, it's about, he plays with his, where he lives in Massachusetts. He's coming. Love he, you, baby. He, he, came, he came from our old life as well. We get James, homeless in Santa Clara, California. We're going to be getting, wa we're waiting for everything. We're going as fast as we can, James. Bureaucracy, government, blah, blah, blah. Thank you, Soundtrack. Cal from Wisconsin. We're happy to have you there. The Cheeseheads love it. 
Marysville, Michigan, Bob. Welcome, welcome, nice. welcome. I like that. So we had a couple of haters, and the haters were from the U. Uh, one of them was from the UK, and I had to, I had to, I had to, I had to bail. Chicago. I just don't want to hear the negativity. Gary, welcome from Chicago, no the Windy City. Negative does nothing but breed more negative. It's all about the attitude, it's all about the head, it's all about being positive. Which we can control. We can control our attitude, we can't control anyone else. I am not trying to play big Yeah, brother. Alan, Helsinki, Finland, we're happy to have you here. But I just couldn't take them anymore. So, see ya. Helsinki. Yeah. <laughs> Igloo, New York, Jimmy Frozen. He's still a little chilly up there, I guess. Yeah, 36 but... and rainy today, he said. Ugh. San Diego, your worst nightmare. Oh, I'd be having, I'd be having beautiful dreams in San Diego. No, that's his name. His, his well, I name know. is the worst nightmare, nightmare, and he lives San in San Diego. Diego. I like San Diego. Bring Belgium, it on. welcome nice. from Belgium. Thank you, thank you, thank Terry you. Terry Butts from um, Belgium. Yeehaw! Well, they, they, they're eating dinner over there in Belgium about they're now. They're on right? a Saturday night. They're getting ready to party over there. Yeah, man. Yeah. I like that. Thank you for right. joining in and turning, tuning in, everybody. Have a great week. We're in April, Monday, April Fool's Day. Don't be a fool. Be safe. Be happy. Check in with your neighbors. The first day of the new business quarter, I'll have you know. Coming up, bring it on home. Let's make 2019 a year to remember. I'm so excited that you guys all tuned in. I want everybody to be cool. I want everybody to be kind. I want everybody to be happy. And, of course... Eat me! We'll see you next week.